Uh, we are delighted this morning, like I said, to feature Sedalia Area Farmers Market as our startup. Founded in 2009, it is a producers only nonprofit organization. So, folks, please join me in welcoming Bev Rollins with Sedalia Area Farmers Market. Good morning. Thanks, Jessica. I truly appreciate it. I think I, I know most of you who are out there, and I know several of you have been customers at the farmer's market, or your spouses have been at the farmer's market numerous times. So uh, thank you for your support in advance. Um, whoops, that's a little touchy. Um, so uh, like Jessica said, I'm Bev Rawlings. I am uh, founded the market with Brenda. And uh, Brenda Rates, who I have here, is our market manager. And uh, we were going to have Allison Roop from Roop Family Farm with us today, but uh, she became ill yesterday and still is not well enough to join us yet. So our vision, uh, which was actually born out of a health crisis of my own, was to create a robust, healthful local food network for not only the health of the public, but also to help sustainable business. And so uh, we are, in fact, an incubator for small business. And um, we operate as a not-for-profit because we, uh, we want the board to work to help grow the businesses that are in the market and not be worried about our own competitive business that is trying to operate in the market. So uh, we found a group of interested folks uh, who are very passionate about local food. And that's one of the things that we found is that no matter what your political persuasion, that we have the whole spectrum at the Sedalia Area Farmers Market, and everyone can agree on the value of good food. So that has been one of the wonderful things that we have found through the farmers market. We have an all-volunteer board, and they're fantastic. And we have two State Fair Community College uh, student members and uh, they're very active within the organization as well. Um, we are a grower-only market, which means that you must grow or otherwise produce whatever you bring to the market to sell. Uh, the, all of our vendors must be from Pettis or its contiguous counties. We have very limited exception to that, which would be that if there is something that someone wants to bring that is Missouri grown or made that is not offered in Pettis or the contiguous counties, then we will allow them to sell at the farmer's market. So the nuts and bolts of the market that we're open only six hours per week, but those are six very powerful hours. Uh, we're open three to six, Tuesdays and Fridays. We open the first Friday in May and run all the way through the last Friday in October. We're located on the Missouri State Fairgrounds. They're an excellent partner for us, right across from Katie's Barbecue inside that main gate. We accept cash, debit, credit, and EBT. Uh, we use a token system. So if you come to the market tent and you don't have cash to spend at the vendors, then you can slide your card at our machine that we have there. And we have $5 debit tokens that spend just like $5 bills. And we have $2 EBT tokens for the folks that have electronic benefits transfer um, so that they can also shop at the market easily. So our growth. Uh, in 2009, we started with six full-time equivalent vendors. We were actually in downtown Sedalia. Uh, the downtown Sedalia was a wonderful partner for us, but with our, um, with our vendors having obviously highly perishable product, that we needed more drive-by traffic in order to um, satisfy the supply and demand. And so uh, two years later, we moved out to the Missouri State Fairgrounds, and today we have 23 full-time equivalent vendors. That was actually last market season. We're still waiting to see how many we have this year, but we're up to 26 so far this year. Um, we have also added, uh, three years ago, what we call the Winter Bounty Bag, and that is a subscription program that we run November through April. We uh, sell 60 memberships, and our vendors who can produce year-round uh, provide what goes into those bags. It's more of a surprise. It's an, it's, uh, uh, twice per month during the winter months. And uh, so you won't expect anything like sweet corn or watermelon, but you'll get lots of greens and roots veg root vegetables, eggs, breads, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we've capped that at 60 memberships right now, but we hope to grow that further. Um, and in 2016, we added our first paid employee. Brenda is our market manager. Like I said, she's been with the market since the very beginning, and she knows the business better than anybody. Our partners, and we're so grateful to them, the Missouri State Fair in allowing us to be at the fairgrounds, 
Bothwell Regional Health Center has been a partner since the very beginning for us. Each year they've provided a $1,000 grant that we use to match EBT transactions in the market. So if somebody has EBT, an EBT card, they can slide it and we will match up to $10 per market day uh, for our EBT customers. MFA Agri-Services, Kevin Daniel has always been a great supporter from the very beginning. State Fair Community College, uh, they helped to organize us in the very beginning and they continue to supplement us with student uh, members, which is a fantastic partnership. Of course, the Missouri Department of Agriculture, not only in their um, relationship to the Missouri State Fair, but also in other programs that they provide for our growth and development. And then the Missouri Farmers Market Association is basically our trade association and they uh, provide ongoing educational opportunities. What makes us unique? We're grower only. So many of the places that you find around are actually resellers and they don't actually know how the produce has been grown at the market. So we get the fun of going on farm visits to our vendors. That is an agreement that they must uh, abide by that when they become a vendor at the Sedalia Area Farmers Market that we are going to visit their production location to um, not only find that they're actually selling only what they're producing, but also to help develop relationships with them so we can help promote them. We also provide vendor training at the beginning of each season. The Department of Health, as well as the Department of Weights and Measures, provides uh, training to our vendors so that they can comply as best they can and learn other outlets for safe food handling. Uh, we feel like we have an excellent family atmosphere. We hear this um, time and time again. We're staffed by volunteers who are excited to be there, excited about local food. We have a diverse uh, amount of offerings, although we're still working to develop that diversity. Uh, everything from coffee to uh, pupusas from El Salvador to, uh, where am I, six minutes? Am I already really at six minutes? Okay. Uh, those are some of our promotions, uh, challenges and opportunities. We're constantly seeking to expand our customer base, meeting supply and demands, matching those up is difficult. Um, volunteer recruitment is always a challenge, something that we wanna do. Uh, we, want, we would like to have a full-time winter market and an all-weather pavilion. So here we go with our questions and hopefully answers. I wasn't too far off, was mm. I? I? But I do want to um, uh, start up our other, we have a, to show you some photos of what we do. And uh, you can start firing away with your questions if you like. Yes? Um, we're wanting to add a restaurant to our, our facility. Yay. Um, are we able to, what, what are the, do you know the rules and regulations on buying local foods for restaurants? Um, well, it's basically, you would have to practice safe food handling um, and the Pettis County Department of Health. Are you still in Pettis County? I can't yes. remember if you're far enough south. Pettis okay, County. you're Pettis County. Five, one road. Okay, all right. One road and I would have been in Vince. Okay, uh, anyway, they've been excellent to work with as far as providing those guidelines and safe food handling practices. Um, but uh, they, they provide training on those and they would need to certify your kitchen that you prepare the food in. So um, we can connect you with those sources if you would like to get a leg up on that. We spoke to the people about what we needed. It was just like three sinks, um, refrigeration, but I didn't know about the actual food if you were able to buy local food to serve. To yeah, absolutely. Food. Buying local is encouraged and um, not, not an issue as long as it's washed properly and handled properly. Then we have several restaurants that do buy from the market. Okay, so that's wonderful to know. Yeah, yeah. It's, yes, okay. Jessica. So when you launched, what was your biggest challenge when you launched the market? What's the biggest challenge that you face today? The biggest challenge when we launched the market um, was uh, building our customer base. Um, like I said, when we were downtown, it was a wonderful location, had a great feel for it, but didn't have the drive-by traffic. Uh, and so um, finding a way to grow that, that customer base was really difficult. There were days when Brenda and I were the biggest customers and we went home with way more produce than we needed because we're standing there managing the market and there's vendors there that have produce to sell and not enough customers. So um, thankfully we don't feel like we have to do that anymore, that we only get what we need. <laughs> but um, I would say our biggest challenge today is still matching supply and demand. Mm -hmm. um, that for the first time this year, we actually turned, turned away a couple of uh, vegetable growers 
because uh, we feel like that we have saturated the demand for our customer base right now and that it would be counterproductive for our current vendors um, to actually bring on more at this time. So we would bring somebody that's offering something unique, but right now we have uh, plenty of tomatoes and sweet corn and eggplant and potatoes, et cetera, et cetera. So um, just getting the word out, I, we still hear so many people that don't know that we're there. And, and I suppose, you know, when you're open six hours a week, that might be, <laughs> might, you know, be a challenge, but that's the nature of farmer's markets is fresh and now, so. Um, that's what we find is our greatest challenge still. Scott. As buildings collapse or get torn down in, in downtown, are, uh, there are more and more open spaces. If in all weather, the space was developed there for you, would you consider it? Potentially, I think it's something that we would really need to um, examine our promotional plan for the market in order to generate the traffic that's down there. There's a lot of wonderful things that are happening in downtown, which we love. I love as being a citizen of Sedalia. Um, the, our main challenge is that our, our vendor's product is so perishable that, um, that it's hard for them to wait, um, to wait for the market to build up. So um, we would consider it and maybe a, even a third location for the market as far as you know that we've got the Tuesday and Friday that maybe even like the the third Thursday event would be a good place to start with that. Mark did you have a question? That's really what I was going to ask if you're sensing any need for uh, additional hours of availability and if there are any plans for, for the market to be open more. Um, we when we first started we were a uh, uh, Tuesday, fr Tuesday, Saturday market that we are open on Saturday mornings, but uh, where we are located geographically, that many of our vendors sell at Columbia and they also sell in Kansas City. So, um, and of course, those are huge Saturday markets. So we found that um, trying to compete with those markets on Saturday mornings did not work for us. That's the reason that we moved to Friday night. And it seems to work very well for us so far, although we do have many customers who still say, you know, I really love to browse the farmer's market on Saturday morning. Um, but in order to offer the greatest variety to our customers, we are open on Friday nights. And I don't anticipate that changing anytime soon just because of the nature of our geographic location. Yes. Uh, I have two questions. One is, as a 501c3, are you funded somehow? Uh, we are funded by vendor fees. Uh, but we do not receive any other, um, uh, you know, taxpayer funding, noth nothing like that. Um, we do. It's SedaliaAreaFarmersMarket.com, and uh, we also um, stream on uh, stream our Facebook onto our website. Uh, we have um, almost 4,000 likes on our on our um, Facebook page. We uh, have a Twitter account, and we also have uh, Pinterest now. And so we're very active with social media, which we find is a very effective marketing tool for us, especially the fresh and now. We also, if you go to our website, you can sign up for our daily market email, which we send out as a reminder uh, to, that the market is happening that day and also what is going to be at the market that day. A fairly good summary. It's not always completely accurate, but it's close. Yes. What's your vendor retention and do they, are they finding it profitable? Yeah, um, we have, let's see, uh, we have two of the original six that are still with us. Um, some have moved out of the area. Uh, let's see, three of them have moved out of the area and one just decided that they just couldn't do it anymore. I mean, health-wise. And, uh, but we, they are still with us at the market and uh, we find that our retention is getting better and better every year. Uh, but we all, it's also very hard work to do the farmer's market. Even though it's only six hours a week, there's a tremendous amount of preparation, as you can imagine, that goes into it. Uh, farming is not easy work, obviously, as you know. Um, so there are some people that kind of go into it with an idyllic attitude, like, I'm going to grow some fruits and vegetables. There won't be weeds. The weather will always be perfect. And then when they find the reality of it um, hits, that they, don't, they find they don't want to do that lifestyle. Um, so we try to be as supportive as we can in promoting the vendors and giving them the best chance possible. Um, but ultimately, it's the, the grit of the vendor in determining whether or not they will last. So, yes? I haven't been on your website, but do you have a, 
a list of products that you are willing to market there? I mean, is there, is there a, okay, you can, you can sell this at farmer's market or you can't sell this, is that? Right. Do we have anything that, I mean, you, as long as you're producing what you're selling, you know, we've had people that have like wanted to do Mary Kay at the market or um, Juice Plus or other items like that, that, that they are the seller, but they didn't produce the product. And so those um, kinds of entities wouldn't be eligible to be at the farmer's market. But pretty much if you're selling it, um, we do try to create a ratio. Um, let's see, we're at 20%. I think 28. Yeah, 2080 that we try to maintain as far as food, non-food. So we um, sh very strongly um, want to be a, primarily a food market, um, but we do have uh, sign vendors and soap vendors and... Um, Coffee is... Uh, but it's, that's a food for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, but as... but. Uh, oh, we have a doll vendor that she makes handmade sock dolls. Um, so those, th those kinds of things, uh, we try to keep them no more than 20% of the market mix because people are really there for the food rather than the, the more artisanal craft items. Uh, so are there nuances to our customer base here? Maybe other farmers markets don't face? Are there uniquenesses of um, the, the folks, their buying habits or it is hard for me to compare our customer base to other folks. Um, I can say that, um, you know, 20 years ago there were um, dozens of farmers market across the country, the, across the country, and now there are thousands, literally thousands and thousands of farmers markets across the country. That people have really gotten back into the knowing your food. Um, knowing where it comes from, supporting the local, and um, and that's what I love about this one million cups is that is really supporting the local homegrown things, and uh, so I think that um, we don't necessarily have a unique customer base. Um, we may just because of our um, population to statistics, we may have an older customer base, which I love. I, uh, we have um, one gal that um, if anybody does if anybody know Anna Mae Kane. Um, she is probably our oldest customer, and she just pulls up curbside, <laughs> kind of waves, and tells us what she wants, and then she gets what she wants and goes on. Um, so yes, so so we have customers, and we have the little sprouts that, from from infants all the way up through you know um, octogenarians. So we love the variety of of customers that are at the farmers market. Like I said, we just all agree on good food. So yes, Linda. I just want to um, compliment you on your perseverance. Um, Deb and I met through lunch many times, and uh, the pain and agony that she was going through and trying to create her dream and realize her dream. And congratulations! For Thank you. That. Thank you. It's been a team effort. I couldn't do it without her. <laughs> we yes. Go ahead. Uh, okay. I just wanted you touched on it very briefly at the very end there was talking about your winter plans in the future. Yeah. Obviously you can't do it all throughout the course of the year. You're not gonna be able to produce like the vegetables and stuff like that unless they're in a greenhouse or something along those lines. Right. But you talked about maybe the locations. Is is that an idea for the winter? Maybe find an indoor location or is it gonna be just something that's as in, uh, maybe once a month or whatever right. the case may be? Right. Gen generally, when markets go through the winter, they're just a couple of times uh, a month versus you know twice a week. Obviously, like you said, that the, we we have the challenge of the weather, and it's not always the cold so much as the sun. Is that we just don't get enough sun to actually make the vegetables grow. So we have many vendors that have high tunnels now. Um, that are those big hoop houses that you see. Um, so we have uh, numerous vendors that, that actually have those and have the capability to grow year round if they get enough sunlight to actually produce. So last year was very mild and it was easy, but again, agriculture is a, is a no guarantees proposition. So we would probably be looking at a couple times uh, a month and if we can find an indoor facility that, that works um, and that's easy to haul things in and out of or just pull right up to, that would be wonderful. Um, we got a little teaser out in front of us. Uh, the governor had approved funding for a, um, for a pavilion to replace that governor's ham breakfast tent. 
And um, now it's on hold because, you know, there's um, withholdings that the governor is doing because of um, wondering about how we will land at year end with the state budget. So we hope that that will still be released and that that is something that we can um, participate and, and do. But um, again, agriculture is a risky proposition and there's no guarantees, especially when it comes to tax and politics. So, um, but yeah, ideally we'd get there eventually. Uh, one of the things that I do want to say is that we, um, we have a shortage of fruit vendors, even as I say peaches right mm -hmm. here, um, but um, apples, berries, uh, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, um, that if you know of somebody who thinks that they might like to, um, really one of the great things about the farmer's market, it's a fairly low barrier to entry. Our membership fee is $75, and then it's $5 per market day that you sell at the market. So it's a fairly low risk proposition. Um, and so if you know of anybody who's actually interested in, in producing those things, then we have a high demand for those at the farmer's market and would love to add that to our mix. Yes? What do you do during the fair? We relocate to the West Lakes parking lot. Uh, Webb and Sons is very kind to let us move over there on the south end of their parking lot. We're a much smaller market during the fair. A lot of our vendors choose to take a little time off during that time, but we still have excellent offerings. And of course, like I said, it's a highly perishable item. So our, our peach vendor, if they have peaches, will be there and um, tomatoes will be there and all the, the great things. So we, we move there because it's still fairly close to our original location, but you don't have to deal with fair traffic quite so much over there. Okay, one last question. Yes. What can we as a community do for you? Well, um, I think, again, growing our customer, customer base is um, important. Just for people to know that we are there twice a week and um, that we, do, we are actually a grower-only market. Um, we, we still have people that come up and say, there's no way those peaches came from Missouri, or there's no way that those cantaloupes came from Missouri, and, or that sweet corn, because it was so early. But, uh, but we do post all of our um, farm visits on our Facebook page. And uh, you know, just depending on the weather, we may have sweet corn super early in June. Um, but to help us spread the word so that we can continue to grow our customer base, uh, because we would like to, um, we would like to keep growing to a certain point, and you know, I use the word growing. We'd like to keep expanding to a certain point uh, so that we have an excellent product, mi product mix for the size of geographic area that we're trying to serve. So that is our, our biggest need. And how many vendors do you have now? Uh, we have, well, we, I think we have about 26 full-time equivalent vendors. Um, we have some are th that are there just one day a week. We have some that are there two days a week. but. So when, if you come to the market, you'll see about 20 vendors set up on any given day. What a great showcase of over 25 entrepreneurs. And right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Gave them all cards. Yes. Guys, help me thanking Bev and Brittany. Thank you. Thank you.